Chatelet, my dudes, and welcome to the Oversimplified Lord series, the series where I will explain video game lore quickly and efficiently. Too efficiently. The Elder Scrolls games are a fantastic series of sandbox RPG games that many of us enjoy very much. However, some are not completely satisfied with just the gameplay of these games. Many Elder Scrolls fans seek to learn more about the world around them and how it came to be. For this video, we will be looking into the Morethic Era and the events that transpired during it. It's important to note that, as with all lore discussions, this is my personal interpretation of the lore and what I say may be different than another person's lore depending on what source they use. Alright, let's get into it. The beginning of the Morethic Era takes place directly after the moment of convention in the Dawn Era when Ariel shot Lorcan's heart into the sea east of Morrowind. The Adamantine Tower, where the Divines met to destroy the heart, is dated to have been built around this time, officially starting the Morethic Era, so it seems the Dawn Era and the Morethic Era have a tiny bit of overlap in the timeline. Also at around this time, Primordial Beast Folk wandered the lands of Tamriel and were illiterate, or lacking the ability to read or write. It is suggested that at this point in time, the Khajiit of Elsewhere were the predominant Beast Folk culture in Tamriel. The middle portion of the Morethic Era sees the Aldmer sailing from Eldmeris and settling along the southern coasts of Tamriel. Much like in our own history of how the Europeans discovered and settled into North America, so too did the Aldmer settle into Tamriel. Their more sophisticated and literate culture conquered the indigenous beast folk and cast them away to the deserts, marshes, jungles, and wastelands of southern Tamriel. In addition to this, the Aldmer also erected towers along the coasts of Tamriel. The most notable of these towers was the Crystal Tower, built on Somerset Isle, and is where the rulers of the Aldmer would oversee their domain. Aldmeri explorers later would map the coasts of Ardenfell and the River Nibbon, led by Torvald the Pilot. Once at the Eight Islands of Cyrodiil, Torvald traded teachings of literacy to the Birdmen of Cyrodiil in exchange for ownership of the island. Communications between the Elves of Cyrodiil and the Elves of Somerset Isle became virtually non-existent, and the Wild Elves of Cyrodiil began to isolate their culture from Old Mary culture. This was the birth of the Aelids. It was at this point that the Aelids erected the White Gold Tower. The period of time after this first separation of Elves also saw many different sects of Elves branch from traditional Old Mary culture. During this time, the Dwemer, a free-thinking, scientifically-based sect of Elven culture, settled in the Velothi Mountains. The Chimer, a more traditional sect fond of ancestor worship, followed the prophet Veloth into modern-day Vardenfell, and the Orsimer were said to have been born from the transformation of Trinimac into Malakath by Boethia. Later in the Morethic era, Falathi culture in Vardenfell would begin to devolve into many tribes, which would become the Great Houses of Morrowind, and the Ashlander tribes of Vardenfell. At around this time as well, the Dwemer would begin to establish their first freehold colonies. It is also at this period in time when the High Elven Towers along the coasts of Tamriel would be abandoned. At around year ME 1000, the first Edmoran settlers would begin to colonize the northern coasts of Tamriel in High Rock, Hammerfell, Cyrodiil, and later Skyrim. Ysgrimor led a fleet to the Zaric head of the Broken Cape in northern Skyrim. He later constructed the city of Sarthal nearby and would live peacefully with the Snow Elves until the Eye of Magnus is discovered. Fearing the threat that the Eye of Magnus posed, the Snow Elves committed genocide against the Atmorans in the infamous Night of Tears, although Ysgrimor would escape back to Admora. Telling of the atrocities the Snow Elves had committed, he recruited 500 companions to help him hunt down the Elves and drive them to near extinction. In his later years, Ysgrimor would study the Elven language and develop a runic transcription to begin the Nordic language, making him the first human historian. His people would become the Nords of Skyrim. It is important to note that the genocide of the Snow Elves did not stop with Ysgrimor. In the later years, the Snow Elves were cornered in Solstheim, where in the Battle of the Mosring, the Snow Prince fell, and the Elves were forced to seek refuge with the Dwemer in Blackreach. In Blackreach, the Snow Elves would make a deal to eat poisonous mushrooms which would give them blindness in exchange for their continued survival. Later, the War of the Crag would break out between the now Falmer and Dwemer, and would end with the disappearance of the Dwemer in the First Era. Back to the expansion of men, 
It is around this time of elven genocide that the tribes of men would begin to spread across Tamriel, notably the Needs in Cyrodiil. After this event, Pelennal Whitestrake would begin his various conquests across Tamriel in year 660 of the Morethic Era. Back to the Nords of Skyrim, these people brought with them their Admoran tradition of animal worship, which gave rise to the power of dragon priests who ruled over the masses with an iron fist. In year ME139, the Nordic people would grow tired of their ruling overlords and would rebel against the dragons and their priests in the Dragon War. In the beginning phases of the war, the Nordic people would be absolutely slaughtered. Their vast numbers were no match for the Thuum of the Dragons. It is at this point when Parthenax would step in and assist the Nordic people in the learning of the voice. The Nords would then begin to push the force of the dragons back and banish Alduin forward in time to the fourth era where he is encountered by the last dragonborn. Despite the Nordic people claiming victory in the dragon war, several sects of dragon cultists would persist into the first era. It is thought that the Standing Stones of Skyrim were planted at this point to mimic the 13 birth signs of the stars. And finally, the end of the Morethic Era is marked by the beginning of the Cameron Dynasty in Valenwood, officially beginning the First Era. Alright my dudes, that's it for the Morethic Era. There are a few events that I did not discuss including the Sunbirds of Alinor, the Wars of Yakuta, and the building of the towers across Tamriel. The reason for this is the relative lack of lore and placement on the timeline. Anyway. I hope you enjoyed the video, be sure to be a dude and subscribe, join the discord, and I will see you guys next time. Re-indeed, and stay frosty.